So Giannis Antetokounmpo has to around December 21st to uh, tell the Milwaukee Bucks if he will or will not sign. It's about a five-year, $228 million Supermax extension for the Greek Freak, the two-time reigning MVP. He obviously could just play things out this season and then still get around that same amount of money, probably a little bit more actually on the dollar if he waits until next summer, fallish, whenever this season ends, uh, if he wants to sign Mil- with Milwaukee, n- you know, next year, he can do that, right? He could do that right after the season. He could kind of wait and see how free agency plays itself out. And if he wants to go back to Milwaukee, obviously Milwaukee would love to have him. They've pretty much traded away all their picks to acquire Drew Holiday. So they're all in on winning a championship in the next couple of years. And they want to do it with the Greek freak as their focal point. Now, Giannis is one of those guys... And I don't say this about a lot of guys. You know, uh, Kevin Durant, I would not say this about. Anthony Davis, what I'm about to say, I would not say this about. Uh, maybe even, there's probably only three guys that I would say this about. And that's LeBron, Giannis, and James Harden. Because they don't get injured often, knock on wood, for me personally, especially with LeBron and, and Giannis, with the, amount, with the physical shape that they've been in, Giannis could, if he want to, he could probably get away with doing the LeBron James approach, you know, signing one-year deals, two-year deals. I bet if Giannis got LeBron into a closed room right now today, I bet uh, LeBron would advise Giannis, you know, not even on, like, trying to, you know, slide him or, or snake him or anything like that. I bet LeBron would tell Giannis, like, yo, if you if you know you, you put that work in with your body, obviously injuries could happen. Uh, man, but still, you put that work in. Sign two-year deals. Sign, at the at the longest, a two-year deal with a, a player option on the third. Do Or if you can, do a one plus a one, meaning it's a two-year contract. You get your money per year, but you allow yourself that ultimate uh, flexibility, and, and, and you still get to put that weight on teams back to continue to get better and to never slack. I feel like that was one of the issues that LeBron had a couple times in his career. Obviously, in Cleveland first time around, they couldn't get a free agent to come. Now, Cleveland tried to go get talent. They were just unable to convince guys like Amari Stoudemire and company to come to, to want to play in Cleveland, Chris Bosh to want to play in Cleveland. But I feel like LeBron, if he know what he knows now back then, he probably would have been like, hey, y'all better figure it out. Y'all better give me something. It better be better than Delonte West and Mo Williams. You know, and in, in Miami, I felt like, you know, LeBron signed a four-year deal there. Uh, LeBron probably would have liked that to have been a two plus a one. Looking back on it, he might have would have wanted to leave after that second championship uh, against the San Antonio Spurs instead of uh, trying to go forward uh, the fourth finals appearance in a row. I'm pretty sure LeBron would tell Giannis that behind closed doors. Again, I don't know that, but I'm just assuming. And with Giannis and the amount of injuries that he has not had in his career, I think it's a very promising sign that Giannis, you know, he could play this thing out with, you know, no future deal already signed and, and be fine. I don't think the Greek freak's going to get injured anytime soon. Again, knock on wood. Apparently, according to Brian Windhurst over there at ESPN, my former co-worker, uh, the Milwaukee Bucks felt confident that they were going to get Giannis Antetokounmpo to not wait until next season, after this season is complete, to sign that five-year 228. They thought they had it in the back right now, before December 21st. Uh, apparently, the Milwaukee Bucks were, quote, cautiously optimistic about Giannis signing that Supermax extension. And that came after the Milwaukee Bucks not only acquired Drew Holiday, but thought they had acquired Bogdan Bogdanovich, who was a restricted free agent over from the Sacramento Kings. But remember, to make a long story less long, if you want to go watch one of my other videos, we explain this one in much more greater detail. What happened is Bogdan wanted to be a Milwaukee Buck. But the truth of the matter is, you're not supposed to negotiate contracts with guys until free agency starts. And we know, wink, wink, that all that rule always gets broken. Agents are on the phone with teens. I bet, come on now, what do you expect? It happens. But it can't be so vividly open, obviously with other teams knowing. And again, the trade period started before free agency started. So what happened is, on like day one, day two of the trade moratorium, uh, the, the Milwaukee Bucks, they got Drew... And then they went and made a deal with Sacramento, which would have been like a sign and trade type of a deal. Sacramento would have essentially signed their guy, Bogdan, and traded him to Milwaukee uh, for a couple of the Bucks rotational guys. But then owners and teams around the league start looking around like, wait, 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 wait. 
how have the Milwaukee Bucks already re-signed, or the, the Kings already re-signed their guy, and, and Bogdan's already signed on to go play in Milwaukee. How has all that happened when technically right now, all we are supposed to have been, been able to work out is trades with other teams, not contract negotiations with Milwaukee. And plus, you got to believe Milwaukee got on the phone and worked out a deal with Bogdan before he signed. Why would he do that? If you're Bogdan, you could just wait. You, you could have just waited till free agency started and then got your contract. So I believe with the tampering implications, Bogdan and Milwaukee, both in their best interest before they got sued um, or fined by the league, I believe they both opted to just say, you know what, we're not going to do this. We can't get this off right now. And that's why Bogdan ended up signing with Atlanta, with the Hawks. And, um, you know, at this point, point in time, the Atlanta Hawks now have uh, Daniel Gallinari and Bogdan. Those gentlemen together are making over $130 million uh, in Atlanta. So, I mean, they got their two guys that they wanted in free agency. They got them. You know, it was between those two guys and Gordon Hay was on that list as well. But in regards to Giannis, Again, I, I'm assuming Milwaukee thought that they were going to get their guy. Now, I don't know how much weight just trading for Drew Holiday does alone. Maybe Bogdan and Drew would have got Giannis done. I don't know. Um, if I'm Giannis, I'm playing this thing out. That, that's what I'm doing if I'm Giannis. But I'm not in this team. And I'm not in this camp. And again, you know, Giannis wasn't a highly touted guy. And if you look at his story with Woj and ESPN, you see how much work Milwaukee put in to, you know, get Giannis on that, that roster. And also remember, Giannis... Not only have Milwaukee, not only have they done everything to make just Giannis happy, they got his brother on the roster as well, right? So, I mean, you know, the, the, the Bucks have went out of their way to show Giannis, we'll do whatever it takes to keep you happy here in Milwaukee. They've went a couple extra steps, I believe. They learned a lot from, this is very similar to LeBron in Cleveland, man. If you look at it, it it's very similar to LeBron's first go around in Cleveland. So, the Milwaukee Bucks have definitely, with where they're located in the country, um, they've definitely tried to go out of their way to do as much as they can to make Giannis more happy than what the Cleveland Cavaliers were able to do with LeBron first go around with, between him and Dan Gilbert in Cleveland. So we'll see if that's enough. I don't believe it should be enough. I like when guys, again, those who don't have nagging injuries, go, if you got nagging injuries, go get your bag. But if you don't, man, I like playing it out and making these teams feel the pressure to go out and get you another all-star caliber guy or a guy on the, on the rise, or go out and trade some of those picks for proven talent. I like that. And uh, we'll see what happens with Giannis. But the Bucks, again, as of a few days ago, they were cautiously optimistic that Giannis would sign with them now, in the next couple of weeks, as we get ready to kick off training camp and the season starts around Christmas Day. All right? Thank you guys so much for the time, love, support. I don't take it for granted. If you were Giannis, let me know in the comment box below. Are you convinced that the Milwaukee Bucks are doing everything in their power to keep you around would you sign that deal today? I'm out.